Hello everyone. Today we will be learning skeleton movement and locomotion. So let's learn first the definition of skeleton. So skeleton, the external or internal hard supporting and protective structure of the body is called skeleton. On the basis of the location, there are two types of skeleton. That is exoskeleton and endoskeleton. Exo. Exo means external. So the external hard supportive and protective structure of the body is called exoskeleton. Example human hair, nails, feathers of birds, scales of fish and reptiles, horns of cattle, etc. Endoskeleton. Endo means internal. So the internal heart supporting and protective structure of the body is called endoskeleton. Example, cartilage and bones. Now let's learn the functions of human skeleton. Number one, it gives support and shape to our body. Number two, it gives protection. Number three, it helps in the formation of blood cells. Number four, it helps in movement and locomotion. Number five, it acts as a storehouse of calcium and phosphorus. Now let's learn the functions of skeleton in detail. So endoskeleton, it provides support and shape. Skeleton, it forms a framework which gives support and definite shape to the body. Without the bones of our skeleton, we would be a blob of water-filled tissue. Number two, protection. So skeleton protects the vital and delicate, delicate organs. Example, skull protects the brain and ribcage protects the heart and lungs. So let's learn the third function of our skeleton that is blood cell production, which is also called as Hemopoiesis. Blood carpuscles, that is RBC, WBC, and platelets, are formed in the bone. And there is a special spongy tissue present inside the bone, which is called bone marrow. So the hemopoiesis actually takes place inside the bone marrow. So here you can see. In the picture, the red red bone marrow and the yellow bone marrow. In the next, mineral storage. Bones are the storehouse of calcium and phosphate, phosphorus, which releases into blood if needed. This helps in regulating calcium and phosphorus level of the blood whenever it is required. Next is movement and locomotion. Bones, along with joints and muscles, help in movement and locomotion. So let's learn the division of human skeleton. So human skeleton is divided into two, that is axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. Axial skeleton. So the endoskeleton, which is present along the central axis of the body, is called as axial skeleton. It consists of skull, the vertebral column, sternum and ribs, appendicular skeleton. The endoskeleton which is present along the appendages of the body 
is called appendicular skeleton or you can say these are the bones of hind limb and fore limb so it includes the pectoral girdle and pelvic girdle and bones of hind limb and fore limb or you can say bones of hind and legs now let's learn the axial skeleton in detail skull it is the skeleton of head and this 29 bone it they include the cranial bones facial bones ear ossicles and hyoid bones so cranial bones you can see here this is a cranial bone the upper part it is the large hollow rounded part of the skull it is formed of eight bones it is a it consists of a cavity called as grand cranial cavity where the brain is located so here where my arrow is there you can see this is the cranial bone and inside this the cavity is present called cranial cavity where the brain is located now let's go ahead and learn the facial bones facial bones this is these are the bones which are present on the front part of the skull and it forms face so this form face it is formed of 14 bones then the next part is ear ossicles ear ossicles are present on either side of skull three small ear bones are present here i have written the name malleus incus and stapes and these are collectively called as ear ossicles so three on each side that means total six bones are there in ear ossicles the next is hyoid bone you can see at the bottom of the skull the hyoid bone is present it is present in the neck region it is horse shoe shaped bone and it supports the tongue so skull they are done now let's go ahead and learn the next part of the axial skeleton so the next part of axial skeleton is vertebral column vertebral column present on mid dorsal region of neck and trunk so here you can see this is a this is your vertebral column till here so it is present mid dorsally in neck and trunk region it consists of 33 bones here it consists of total 33 bones and again on the basis of their location the working rays are divided into five main groups so number one here you can see the cervical vertebra it has seven vertebrae which are present in neck region next is thoracic vertebrae there are total 12 bones which are present in chest region the next is lumbar vertebrae lumbar vertebrae are total five vertebrae and they are present in upper abdomen while sacrum is the next it has five vertebrae which are fused with each other and it is present in lower abdomen and the last is cossacks which is also called as the tail bone so there are total four bones are present which are again fused So now let's go ahead and learn the next one that is ribs and <coughs> ribs and sternum. So st 
sternum you can see here the sternum is a long flat bone it is present mid ventrally so this is the mid ventral position this is present mid ventral this is also called as chest bone ribs there are total 12 pairs of ribs here you can see this is number one two then three four five six seven eight nine ten then eleven and twelve so the first first seven pairs of ribs are called two ribs the first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs they are called as true ribs because they are directly attached to the sternum while eighth ninth and tenth pairs of ribs are called false ribs because they are indirectly attached to the sternum. Fine, you can see here the 11 and 12th rib. They are not attached to the sternum. That's why they are called as floating ribs. So here we are done with the axial skeleton.